Hello there, it's Cassie. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I have five cards plus a bonus using the Brutus Monroe January Inspiration Box called Lots of Love. Now I don't know if this kit is still available, but I will have it linked down below along with all the other products that I used in the description box. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we made today. To save time, I did go ahead and color, uh, stamp out and color several of the images from this set. And I used my Arteza Expert Colored Pencils and I love the penciled look on that and this little image all the little images are just so darling but that is our image I'm also going to be using the stencil of the month for January this does not come in the kit it is separate but I definitely wanted to pair it up I'm also going to use uh, aqua pigment in the color blue violet and I put it into a mini mister along with a little bit of water and I'm going to shake that up and I'm going to put this uh, one of the blue panels from the kit into my mini or my makeshift splatter box, I'm going to spritz some of that aqua pigment all over. Now I want to get a ton of little mini misters now and I want to put all of my aqua pigments into some mini misters because I love the look. It's so cool. Uh, so I'm going to dry this. I'm going to hit this with my heat tool and then I'll show you up close what that looks like. And It's a little bit messy but I really like the look but boy that stencil is so intricate and so so pretty. All right, now we're going to grab our card bases. I'm going to go ahead and cut all the card bases that I need. And I'm using the Not Your Mama's Heavyweight Cardstock. This stuff is fabulous. It's 120 pound. I think it's 120 pound. Might be more. 120 pound cardstock. So it is a heavyweight cardstock. So my tip for you is when you are scoring it, you'll definitely want like some sort of a score buddy. Score it on both sides. So score it at your whatever side you need. Flip it over and score it again. That will break up those fibers. I scored mine at four and a quarter. These are going to be mostly side folding A2 size cards. I'm putting that panel back into my mini misty. I'm going to ink up the XOXO. And I'm going to ink that up with my Raven Detail Ink. I don't know if you can hear some little bells in the background, but my cats are having a heyday wrestling with each other in the background. <sighs> I'm going to glue down my doily. And I think the best way to do a doily is probably to use some sort of a dry adhesive, you know, like a tape runner or something. I did use a liquid adhesive, which is fine because I end up covering a lot of that with my image, but it will wrinkle and it will buckle a little bit using a liquid glue. It really doesn't bother me that much. I mean, it is a doily, but a, a dry glue or dry adhesive would be much better. I'll flip that over and I'll trim that down with my Brutus Monroe scissors. And my panel is actually a little bit smaller than the front of an A2 size card. So I did trim a little bit of that off. So my panel is four inches by five and a half inches. And a typical A2 is four and a quarter by five and a half inches. Because I did use a lot of water on my panel, and this is not a heavyweight card panel that I had used I did use some liquid or some dry adhesive like I was talking this is just some score tape this is uh, eighth inch score tape and then I put that down to the front of my card I'm going to use some Brutus Monroe foam tape on the back of my darling little pup image and this little pup is modeled after Minnie Monroe which is Christopher's pup and isn't she adorable for some embellishment I'm going to grab not only those tiny little hearts that came in the kit, which I love, I'm also going to use some of these uh, purple prism sequins. These are new to Brutus Monroe and they're so beautiful. When they hit the light, they just, they're so cool. I have uh, several of the colors and I'm just thrilled with them. So I'm going to use my crystal katana along with the Brutus Monroe craft glue to glue all those down. And then as a final bit, I'll ink up the image one more time using some wilted violet distress oxide and stamp that on the inside. And that will actually finish off card number one. Love it! Before we get into card number two, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the foiling process. I'm going to grab three of the foilables. It came with eight, but I'm going to grab three of them. I'm going to use some of this Purple Sketch Brutus Monroe Transfer Sheet Deco Foil. It's awesome. I'm also going to use some Brutus Monroe Red Static, which is beautiful too. And then I also have this Pink Melon, which is just some of that Deco Foil that comes in a tube like that. And I am going, I've cut those down so that it will fit the whole front of the panel. I have some copy paper and a shim, which is just some cardstock, and I have my Amazon Basics Laminator. I'm going to cover the front of the, lamin uh, the laminating sheet with my, 
or my foil bowl with my laminating sheet, and then I'm gonna close that up. Now, you need to try and figure out whatever is gonna work best with your laminator. Um, mine, I've tried all different ways, and it depends. Sometimes it works one way, sometimes it works another. So I started out with the shim on the bottom, I shifted to the shim on the top, then I even tried pulling the shim out, and I run it through about three or four times, depending. And you can kinda see when you hold it up in the light, how it is uh, adhered to the front panel. So as you can tell right there, it's kind of adhered there. So I'm gonna peel this away and it does a really good job. Now there are some parts where it doesn't do a great job and I don't know what the trick is to that. I think everybody's laminator's a little bit different uh, and since I'm using an inexpensive Amazon Basics laminator, maybe that is the difference, but honestly it really doesn't bother me. So you can see it didn't pick up some of those spots, but I really don't mind. So I'm gonna take this Nuvo brush, it's super soft, and I will wipe the rest of the one, uh, the, the foil that didn't stick away. Now this does make a little bit of a mess, so my suggestion is to do it like over the top of your trash can. My next panel, I'm going to ink it up. I'm gonna sponge first. So I've got my Vavos Beauty brushes and some, uh, Ooh, sponge sugar. This is sponge sugar distress oxide ink. You can use regular distress inks, but these panels are so fantastic that Brutus Monroe has because they're smooth. So you can alcohol marker color on the top of them. You can, uh, as I'm showing you, sponge on top of them. It really doesn't matter. And I'll do the same thing with this one, run it through three or four times. And this one didn't do a great job either. It was a little bit sketchy, but honestly, it really doesn't bother me. I think it looks really pretty, especially with that sponging on the background. So as you can tell, it, it adhered really well in some areas and not so much in others. And then here's the lips panel that I did. It adhered most of the way and then in just one spot it didn't. But isn't that so cool? I love, love, love how those turned out. And you know, I, it really doesn't bother me that they're not perfect. It adds to the handmade element. So let's go ahead and get started with card two. I'm gonna grab one of those panels that I made. I'm gonna trim it down to about two inches because I want it to fit over the top of one of the laser cuts that came in the kit. And I'm gonna jazz this laser cut up. I'm using my embossing ink and I'm gonna go over just those edges. And then I'm gonna take the, I believe it's called Flamingo embossing powder. I could be wrong on the name of that. Uh, but this is not available separately as of now, I don't think. If it is, of course, I will have it listed down below, but I'm just gonna cover that with that embossing powder that came in the kit and then I'll heat set that till that is smooth and melted and then I'm going to do the exact same thing to the other side. I'm really not bothered that the inside is kind of messy because that's going to get covered by my panel. So again, pr same process, just covering that with that embossing powder. I'm using a coffee filter to catch all of the excess and then once again tap off the extra and then heat set that till that is smooth and melted as well. So I love how you can use these laser cuts. You can do different things with them. You can sponge on them. I embossed on this one. You can even color on them. All right, I'm also going to stamp my sentiment and I'm gonna do the same thing. I used a magic powder bag on this one though because I don't want any stray powder getting anywhere. I'll stamp down my sentiment, which is hugs and kisses, and I'll cover that with that same embossing powder. And then I'll heat set that till that is smooth and melted. And then when that is cooled down, I'm going to use one of my circle cuts, just a circle die cut that I have, and I'll cut that out. Now I'm gonna start adhering everything to one of those Not Your Mama's card bases, and I'm gonna use the Brutus Monroe Craft Glue to do this, just highlighting some of the areas that I wanna make sure don't poke up. So I didn't go too liberally, but I did get the areas that I thought might stick up. I'll adhere that down. I love how that covers the front of an A2 size card. I will put some of that same liquid glue on the back of my panel and adhere that down and then I'll even do the same thing with my sentiment. I thought about adding more to this card but honestly I just think it really pops with the the foil and the embossing powder and it's just really really pretty. So that is going to finish off card number two. Card number three is going to be very colorful and I'm going to do some ink smushing. I haven't done that in a hot minute. I've got the colors Picked Raspberry, Fossilized Amber, and Mermaid Lagoon Distress Oxide Ink. I'm going to spritz that. I've got this on one of my tonic mats uh, and then I'm just spritzing it. I put some watercolor paper. This is the Arteza Expert watercolor paper. I just smushed it into that and then I'm going to wipe away some of the excess so that it doesn't turn brown and then I'll heat set that till that is dry. And now I'm going to do a little bit more controlled smushing. So I'm just using the packaging from the stamp and I'm just putting down some little splotches where I want it. 
I'll wipe that off. I'm going to grab some of the picked raspberry from the top and then I'll do the same thing with that. So this is one way to get a little bit more of a controlled splatter or not splatter but um, smushing and then I'll do the same thing with the fossilized amber in the middle. And so I like how that kind of overlaps. You get a little bit of green, you get a little bit of orange and it's nice and it just goes from one you know the bottom corner to the upper corner. I'm putting this inside of my mini misty and I'm going to ink up the sentiment that says hugs and kisses with some VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink because it's just a, a very crisp black ink and it works really well on top of watercolor paper. Um, and then I'm going to ink up the little butterfly that's in the stamp set and I'm going to ink it all the way up going from the bottom corner to the upper corner. And I'm using, once again, the stamp packaging because I didn't want to clean off the stamp. I'm a little bit lazy. And this way I don't get any ink transfer when I move my stamp from one spot to the next. So I'll just stamp that cute little butterfly going all the way up into the different colors. I've done something similar to this before. Um, and I just love the way it looks and it's such a fun, fun uh, card in the end. I'm grabbing my Arteza Real Brush Markers, and I'm forgetting that I'm doing this on watercolor paper. Arteza water, uh, Real Brush Markers don't work the greatest on watercolor paper unless you decide to use them on the palette. So here I'm going to put them on the palette, and then I'm going to actually pick these up with my... Um, what is this? It's a it's a glitter brush. I can't remember which one it is, but I do know that Bruce Monroe has just recently come out with one and I'm anxious to get my hands on it just to see how that works. I imagine it works pretty much the same way. So I'm going and I'm grabbing colors that are similar to each one uh, wherever the butterfly is and I am putting down some color and picking up some color from the palette and then this way each of those butterflies has quite a bit of sparkle so it's really nice. Uh, Doggone it. I think this one's a Spectrum Noir sparkle pen. So yeah, that's what it is. And then I'm going to trim off just a little bit. So I'm going to make this a four inch panel by five and a half inches. And then I'm going to cover the back of that panel since this is a very flat card. I'm going to cover the back of that with some Brutus Monroe foam tape all over the back. And then I will peel off the release paper using my paper piercer. And then we will be ready to attach this to my Nacho Mama's card base. And then uh, I'm just going to have a little white edge on one side. But I don't stop there. I am going to embellish this. So I'm going to grab the sequins that came in this kit. And I'm going to grab the clear ones and I'm going to grab the little hearts. And I'm going to put those down just wherever I feel like I want to put them. And I'm using my Crystal Katana along with the British Monroe Craft Glue. And then that is going to finish off card number three. Love how that one turned out. Card number four was a super easy card. I took one of the foilables and I used my Copic R17 just in various spots. And then I trimmed that panel down to two inches uh, and I'm gonna use the other part later on. I did cut down some of the dark gray cardstock that came in the kit. And then uh, I cut that down to four and a quarter by five and a half inches. So it'll be the top of a, or the whole front panel of an A2 size card. I'm using my magic powder bag on that lower corner and then I inked up the stamp love with the clear embossing ink and then I covered that with my alabaster embossing powder and I heat set that till it was smooth and melted. I do have a boo-boo on the back. I, when I stamped it originally it was too far down. So I used my Brutus Monroe glue to adhere that to the front of my Nacho Mama's card base and then I am going to take some foam tape on the back of my little doodled panel. So that's what it reminds me of is a little doodled panel, something you doodle all over in color, which is why I paired it up with the love stent, a sentiment. And then I'll peel off that release paper. And because this is such a flat card, that's why I decided to add a little bit of dimension to it. And then I adhere that down, but that's, I don't stop there. I just decided because this was a doodle type panel, I grabbed my Secura Jelly Roll number eight pen. And this is a white gel pen. And I'm just gonna put some stitching, some faux stitching lines all around the edge of that card. And I feel like that just really does a good job of kind of tying everything together. And then I decide to add a few little dots around the love because again little doodled panel you know if I were doodling this in my notebook I would probably have all kinds of little doodles everywhere and so I cut the panel that I had originally down each of those is about an inch and I'm going to put those on both sides of the inside of the card so that's just a fun way to finish off the inside of the card as well just using a little bit of almost like patterned paper and then I'll trim off the excess and that's going to finish off the easy card number four love 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 how that one turned out 
because I had all the elements done for card number five. That one came together very quickly. I colored this, I think it could be an owl, but I colored it like a little penguin. And I used, again, my Arteza colored pencils. And then I had that panel that I cut down to four inches by five and a quarter, so it's a little bit smaller than an A2 size card. And then I cut that pink panel down to be the whole front of an A2 size card. So I'm using liquid glue to adhere that down. Then I'll use that same liquid glue to adhere my panel down to my card base. This will be a top folding A2 size card, but it'll be more horizontal. And then I'm going to just adhere that down and I'll use some foam tape on the back of my little penguin with her little blue hearts. Whoever drew these images just did an amazing job, they're darling. I'll peel off the release paper and then I'm gonna stick my cute little penguin down. I decided not to add a sentiment because that background has love all over it and I thought it was perfect. I decided to use some Galaxy Black sequins by Brutus Monroe. And I have the little hearts out, but I don't end up using those simply because that background is quite busy. The sequins almost get lost in that background. Um, but I do really love the way this little, little card turned out. So that'll finish off card number five. So cute. And I do have um, a bonus card. I don't show that one. I say bonus because I just make them sometimes and I don't film it. This one is a shaker card and it just uses that lips panel that I made earlier and then the sentiment is heat embossed. So let's go ahead and take a look at the cards that I made today. I would love to know which one was your favorite if you did have a favorite. As I've said many times in these videos, that is actually my favorite part of making all these is hearing which ones you liked the best. And so go ahead and leave that down in the comment section down below. I appreciate all the love and support that you guys give and um, you guys are fantastic. So if you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already done so. And as always, thank you so much for stopping by.